So this I can't use Sokatoa. Why not, Sarah? Because. Because, Sarah. Why can't I use Sokatoa? I don't know. So I'll just, you know, I don't know. It's not 90 degrees. You can't use Sokatoa if you don't have a right angle, right? So, sine law, then you would go sine law and go, okay, well, I know this opposite stuff going on. So this is little b, all right? So I would go little b over sine 92 is, this is little c, 18, over sine c. Can I solve that? Why not? Yeah, I don't have three. I got two unknowns in one equation. Can't do it. Okay. And then I go, well, actually, I got another ratio here, don't I? I go, that's little a, 16 over sine of a. Does that help me? No. No, because I still have two unknowns. If I look at those two, I have two unknowns. If I look at these two, I have two unknowns. So if that's all you got, you guys are stuck. Good thing we got a way to figure it out. It's called cosine law. And you guys all looked on page 136 after that quiz? Looked at that big honking formula? If you had a chance? So, oh, it will. Something called cosine law. Now, I'm not going to prove it. If you want to, feel free to read it in the textbook. Having said that, nobody will. Which is this. A squared is B squared and C squared minus two times the cosine. Sorry, BC times the cosine of big angle A. So... There's your A, B's, and C's. Also, I could write it, what if I'm solving for B squared? Well, I could go like that. Okay, and remember the little letters are the sides, right? So there's only one angle in here. I also, in terms of C, if I want to find side C, I would write it like that. And all three of these are on page 136. So that will be on the quiz or the test. I don't expect you to memorize this. You need to know how to use it though. It looks like science 10. So. Just to let you know, what if this was 90 degrees? What if that was 90? And I put that angle in here. Anybody got an idea what the cosine of 90 is? First, I gotta put it in degrees. So if I put in cosine of 90, whoop, why didn't that take? I went over there, hit enter, clear. Let's clear that, because now we're all confused. What? Cosine of 90 is 0. So if that's 90, if this was put in there, this would be gone. Don't erase this on yours. Does that look familiar? Have you seen that before? Yeah. Doesn't that look like Pythagoras? It is. Okay? This is where it comes from, Pythagoras. It's the cosine law. Okay, but... Now it's not 90 degrees, so I can't get rid of this part. So I want to solve this for B. Okay, so I'm going to use that form. That will help me solve for this guy right here. So do I know A? Yes, I do. Do I know C? Yeah. I know A, I know C, and do I know angle B? I know everything in here, so I can solve this for B squared. 
Okay, so there's the formula. I'm not going to write it again. A squared, 16 squared, and C squared minus 2 times A times C times the cosine of, this is the only angle I have. Okay, and no, this is an isosceles triangle. I have no idea what these angles are, right? Okay, that's why I couldn't use sine law here. It's not like the problem yesterday. Okay, so that'll help me solve for b squared, and then whatever all this stuff is, I just take the square root of it, and I'll have length b. Once I know that, I can use sine law to do the rest. So, how would you guys do this? Do you have a good calculator? Or do you have a dollar store special which doesn't do bed mass? So if you have a bad one, you're going to want to do this stuff. You probably even want to start way over there. Cosine 92 equals times 18 times 16 times 2. That is minus 20.10. Okay, that stuff I put in, that was negative 20. Now, is that confusing? I got another minus in front of it, don't I? So that, this, if you had a bad calculator, you could just put it in like that. That's 580, and then I'm going to minus, minus that. In other words, I'm going to add it, aren't I? Okay, that's 600.1. Then I'll show you the easy way. So if that's b squared, how do I get b? Yeah, I already said it, but let's say it again. Square root of that, 24.49, that's 24.5. Okay, I don't have units, so that's what I got. So, if you got a crappy calculator, that's what you got to do, right? Because it won't do bed mass for you. You know that maybe from grade 9, using a formula to find the surface area of a cylinder. I have a good calculator. So all I'm going to do is just put that right in, from left to right. It does bed mass for me. Do I get the same thing? You bet. So I did tell you guys that everybody's going to need one of these calculators, right? When we get to quadratics in like a month? Not even? We have some at the library to sign out. We're just not sure if we have enough. First come, first serve. Grade 12 what? Do we even teach that here? I have once. Yes, absolutely, you need this calculator for grade 12 foundation. Okay, so that's B. It does say solve, but again, I can use sine law. I know what B is. Let's go back up there, put that in for B. Over sine 92, hopefully all you could do this on the quiz. Let's now find angle C. Okay, how do I solve this for angle C? Did you all get this question right? Yeah, cross multiply. 24.5 times sine C is 18 sine 92. No more fraction. Got this, Cassidy? I want the sine C by itself. Divide that thing away. And then I want to take the inverse sign of all that stuff. So what is that stuff? 18 times sine 92 divided by 24.5 is that inverse sign of that will be the answer angle C, 47. Let's just round it to the nearest degree, 47 degrees. Okay, 
And once I got that, what else don't I know in this triangle? I've got three sides. I got two angles. What's the easiest way to get the last angle? Yeah, subtract it from 180. That is 139. So that looks like it's a, like about 41. Okay. You agree? Flip what thing? I got a better question. Why weren't you paying attention when I was doing it instead of talking? No, because I looked right at you and called your name. Okay. This video is getting recorded. You can watch that again. Example two, got one more. Because sometimes it's easy when it's all A, B's and C's. So let's give you some more letters. F, D. Here's a better question. Why wouldn't you ask me that question before the sign quiz? Why do you ask me after? You don't have an answer, do you? Not you. Okay, this is what you got in your book. And do you think I'm going to rewrite this thing for 26 letters of the alphabet for you? No. So one thing I want to point out. There's only one angle here. Okay? Do you see how that's the angle for the side opposite the one you're trying to find? Okay, that's the relationship. The other two just go in there like that. Okay, so if I got F's, D's, and E's, what can I solve here for? I can solve this thing for little f. So I want to go F squared is, there's the two sides that I know. It doesn't even matter what order they're in. Little d squared, little e squared, it doesn't matter, right? Because b squared and c squared is the same as c squared and b squared. And when I multiply them, it's the same thing. It's not going to matter what order they're in. All you know is that's one of the numbers that's given. That's the other one that's given. Okay? Minus two times. There's the two numbers. What's the only angle I have here? 28 degrees. That goes there. Okay? So if you really want to see it with the funky letters, then I would go d squared and e squared minus 2 de cosine big F. Okay? If it helps, rewrite it, but we should get to the point where it doesn't really matter. Just this angle is always the angle opposite the side you're trying to find. You okay, Hunter? Okay, so I got a good calculator. I'm just going to put all that stuff in. 8 squared and 10, whoop, 10 squared minus 2 times 8 times 10 times cosine 28. That's f squared. 22.728. What is that the answer? Does that look like it's possible? What did I forget to do? Take the square root of it. F is the square root of that. Notice I didn't write it down even. I still got the number in there. Okay, I didn't round it. I'm taking the square root of the whole thing. 4.7, whatever. Answer the question. If it's tenths, that's 4.8. Let's write it. If there's units, put it down. Okay. So, one last thing. Any questions? How do you know when to use cosine law? You... Exactly, when you can't. But we should know, just looking at a triangle, where you want to use cosine law for, because that's helpful. Okay? 
Because instead of writing all this stuff down and then trying to go, oh, I don't think I can do that, I'm going to use cosine law, there's a lot quicker way. When I'm done. Use cosine law when... You see this situation here? I got a side. I have the angle. And I have another side. And the angles between the two sides. But how can we do that more visually appealing? When I know side, angle side, I use cosine law. Tomorrow we'll look at the other way you're going to use cosine law. Side, side, side. Because you know you can't use sine law with that because there's no way I could have three pieces of information when I'm not given any angle at all. Okay? So it's the same formula, it's just manipulated around for the angle. That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Today, it's just this situation here. Side, angle, side. That's when you use cosine law. So questions. 136, 1, 2, 4, and 6AB. Okay, that's it. Cassidy, you got a question? Okay, first, cross multiply. Okay. Okay, okay. First, cross multiply. Do you agree that's the same thing? Okay. And then I want to get rid of 24.5. Sign C's by itself. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other side. Right? Okay.